Hello and welcome to part 2 of this very quick update tour series. Uh, yeah. So the last area we need to update on before I take, take you to Africa is the uh, British Conservation Centre. I'm not going to give it the name I've given it in CSU because I don't know about any laws. So I've used the company's name given it. It's not a profit, but it's a not profit thing. Yeah. I don't want to do anything illegal by calling out their name on YouTube. Um, so I'm saying squirrels, I've this before, but I've now got two British red squirrels, and one of the female is pregnant. Um, this side is kind of my, one of my, is it one of my favourites? I can't decide if I like it or not. So this is Avery, is for red-billed chuffs, the British red-billed chuffs, because they're the only subspecies allowed in the UK, can keep in the UK. But they're also very different to other chuffs. Because these birds, most chuffs live in yeah live in alpine regions and you know have cliffs and meadows, so feed on up there. But British chuffs nest on the coast, along the coastal cliffs, and then feed in the meadows above the cliffs. So I wanted to try my best to kind of get all aspects of that across by giving them a big cliff at the back so that with nesting holes and stuff and ledges. Um, Try to make it like grassy, open, added some plants up and about you know, on the poles, and then even add a little pool just to make sure that they have the option to travel in it if they need wanted to. Um, most of this is all the same, just a few number changes with uh, wetlands Avery. We've got shellbacks now, a few other new species. Same restaurant as last episode. The badges have been updated, so I guess now we'll go over a bridge home to the exhibit, which is really cool. Um, so in Planet Zoo, the badges are active all hours of the day, and so they get stressed out when they're coming across this bridge, or under the bridge, rather. But in real life, they just sit in the burrow whilst the guests are here, so they don't need to travel out of their burrow at night, or at the very least, like, uh, very late in the evening or early in the morning. And so, they wouldn't have to worry about guests, or at least not very much. So, they get stressed in the game, but I don't think it's important. Uh, hurrying around here, oh, sorry, this bit, um, same wildcat and pine nut enclosure as last time, but they've just got more trees around than pine nut being traded away, so it's now in. Uh, this is part one of our fox enclosure. Uh, it's like kind of a two separation enclosures kind of teamed on British anyway, given that which I thought was important, given that the other foxes are kind of not invading cities, but they're moving in. I wanted to kind of reflect that. And then the main part of the enclosure is this side, which is a gra open grassy space. So the uh, the alleyways provide a lot of hiding spaces, whereas this is more natural. I have like a little burrow under a tree on the hill, very much like I'm passing Mr. Fox. You can see a great scene there. Uh, Quentin Blake illustrations in the whole star book. Uh, continuing around. Uh, barn elves in this enclosure, I don't remember if they were in the last episode. Uh, but I've also decided uh, that I'm going to eventually move them. Because this is eventually going to become like, this little corner. The conservation centre is eventually going to come to a basis, so I'd like to move the barn out of um, a little right around the corner so that they're not in the invasive situation. But we do have uh, rose ring parakeets here. Well, so, rose ring parakeets aren't invasive in Gloucestershire, but they are in the home counties in London, Greater London, so kind of like Oxfordshire, Cambridgeshire, Sussex, London. That sort of area. Yeah, they're fairly common there, so yeah, I thought I thought it was a good idea to include them, especially given that I got them from um, a recent competition for in or a, yeah event for Avery Design. Uh, next thing is for little owls. So little owls are sort of invasive in the UK. The science isn't really sure, if I'm honest. But I, they, they do nest in uh, dry stone walls, so I wanted to include this end of the wall, which is, which is the 
behind the um, auction enclosure and this little style just so that there's like it incorporates that kind of aspect and then I just included the fence because whenever I imagine them in the, seeing them in the wild I always think of them sitting on the little fence uh, here's our back view of the auction enclosure again nothing too important um, around here this is our big um, this is our big British grassland. So at the moment we've only got three species on here, but I would like a few more. At the moment we have uh, English longhorn cattle. So again, they're not a wild species, but they are used for grassland management. Uh, we've got new forest ponies. Again, not truly wild, but they are used for management and out semi feral. And I don't know if you can see any. Where's they gone? There should be a small herd of fallow deer. They may be hiding, there they are. I was going to say, they may be hiding in the woodland back here, because I've included a little bit on the edge, so that animals can get out of guest view and uh, in the shade. Yeah. Uh, this path here just makes me back up to this side of them. So just behind the box, I was just going to support them back there. Of this bit's new, this is for our wisdom. We've got the European bison in there. With so we've got a side enclosure and a big enclosure, main enclosure. So I have two males and two females. You only you can only have one male in a herd. So we've got our second male, the smaller male, in the side enclosure. My larger male and the two females in the main enclosure, hoping they'll breed. Yeah, I mean, with an um, I don't think it's, I, if I remember right. I don't think the species are with native to the UK, but there was a bison which is very similar native to the UK, which is now extinct. So the wizards are being kind of used as an alternative, and the wizards are actually being reintroduced, being introduced, slash reintroduced, I'm not sure, to the UK. They're new to perform their role of kind of forest management. They take down all the conifers, the oldest conifers, and let the young ones grow. Uh, moving on, another ungulate enclosure. This one is for Finnish forest reindeer. We very recently got these in a trade, and I've just left this little uh, slightly more open enclosure for them. Reindeer used to be native to the UK, but they um, got wiped out several thousand years ago. So I included them because they probably could survive, if I'm honest. Um, if we had a stable ecosystem and a proper forest again, they probably could survive in those forests in Scotland. Again, I'll do it Yeah, just included some ring there. Uh, we'll move our factors very briefly. We're almost done, almost. Uh, so here we've got a little hedgehog enclosure. Uh, so very often in the UK, there is, you'll see here, there's a lot of, rather than, not, not worded that well, in, in Gloucestershire, there's a lot of hedgehog rehabilitation charities. Uh, so it's very unlikely that a uh, zoo would manage to get a hedgehog around here. I fortunately, uh, fortunately was able to trade for a pair from someone somewhere else in Europe. And I now have a pair here. And whilst they're not wild or re being rehabilitated, I'm kind of thinking of using them as like an ambassador animal or the various charities around here that do rehabilitate wild hedgehogs. So yeah, I've got a small enclosure for them, the breeding, so I'll probably swap them out, swap the babies out. A uh, couple of adults, I'll have like four, at least I think, four or five hedgehogs in there. Um, but yeah, we come up into this walkway, which you can see the hedgehogs from. But the real reason you come up here is this is where I hope that shows itself. That is not why we're here. Come on, show yourself. Uh, looks like they don't want to play today. Yeah. yeah. I'll just one right, right behind that. I can't see it. There it is. This is a pair of great walls. So we've got a pair of uh, Eurasian walls in here, 
um, as part of the same remodeling events we've got our male wizards on. Yeah. And yeah, I've designed this enclosure because it's um, very naturalistic. I've seen them in a very similar enclosure in real life. Uh, yeah, it's a large enclosure. This is, according to the guidelines, this is large enough for a multi generational breeding enclosure. Uh, and in theory, if I just straightened out these corners and made them right angles or near right angles, you could maybe make it into an actual release program enclosure. Um, I don't think there's any plans to release these dwarves because they're domestic, not domesticated, but like are used to humans, so it probably wouldn't be a good idea. But yeah, we've got a little nice secondary enclosure as well, and then it's the little uh, separation enclosures. Again, the following guidelines. Alright, uh, last area for this tour. Um, you can see this, pretend there's bushes and trees all in the way. There's about half of it. Then these all full of bushes. Uh, just a second view of our reindeer enclosure. Uh, follow the path around. I'm probably going to put an aviary about here. And maybe one on the other side, or the same one on both sides. Just to kind of fill in this space, I've left a lot of open space because I don't want I want the guests to be away from the fence when they're not out of the viewing area. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of the viewing area. Let's see if you can work out what it's for. Yeah, so that's you see the side enclosure. The animal isn't in there. The animal's in this main enclosure around here. Which is slightly larger. Again, uh, probably going to plop an aviary down or two down along here. And there's going to be plenty of bushes in the way. So you won't, it'll be nice and dark in here. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of the, view, this is the viewing area for the main enclosure. Uh, this food up is going off. Uh, the animal right there. Uh, yeah, so this is the last enclosure for today. And this is for our lynx. So we've only got one female at the moment. He came from Leaf at uh, Hope Harbour. He's rebranded now, I think, hasn't he? So yeah, this is our female lynx. And yeah, that's, you know, it's, um, I think it's quite a nice enclosure. There's plenty of space for her to hide. I added all the ivy to these walls just onto the fence. So that the only way to see her is through the dedicated viewing areas. Because lynx are shy animals, they don't want to be seen. So you have to go to these ded two dedicated viewing areas to see them. Um, and yeah, the reason the path comes away here, quite a long way, is because I'm going to have loads of bushes, dead and guest noise, and all of that. Yeah. That's, that's it for this episode. Um, yeah, you know, same as I said in the last in every episode so far. Like, comment, subscribe. If you have any ideas for um, as another zoo I should make or um, an enclosure I should design, build, you know, that sort of stuff. I'll try and do it as realistically as I can. But yeah, just throw some ideas my way and I'll see what I can do. See you in the next episode.